Well, what do you know? It's been confirmed that the next Starship launch will only be six weeks away, which means less than two months before SpaceX can test their Starship rocket once more. With such a tight deadline, the team is working at a remarkable pace to resolve the necessary issues at Starbase. And indeed, it's quite difficult to count how many cranes, excavators, and bulldozers are working here. But let's give a rough estimate. There are at least six cranes dedicated to fixing the orbital launch mount, or the OLM. As you know, the OLM had endured the most amount of damage caused by the massive thrust of the Super Heavy rocket booster engines. The Starship first stage, aka the Super Heavy booster, has 33 Raptor engines at its base to lift the massive 120 meter or 390 foot spacecraft. At liftoff during the first Starship launch, three engines failed to fire so the orbital launch test was conducted with only 30 Raptor engines. The thrust of a single second-generation Raptor engine stands at 230 tons or around 500,000 pound force at sea level. The combined thrust of 6,900 tons or 15 million pound force dug a hole at the base of the Starship launch pad. So far, the team removed the panel and some huge covers from the OLM. This huge part at the base of the OLM has also been cut free. Before that, we have seen a new doorway cut out in the OLM, new stairs, scaffolding, and interior work. Notably, SpaceX has also begun excavating the dirt and concrete beneath the orbital launch mount to make room for the new water-cooled steel plate. Efforts to swiftly clear the enormous concrete debris in the surrounding area were also made. Thanks to Starship Gazer, we were able to see this great footage. Doing amazing work as always. Besides the OLM, SpaceX has also started repairing the liquid oxygen tanks which were damaged during the Starship liftoff during the first launch. Following the impact of concrete debris during liftoff, the tanks were observed venting uncontrollably. We see crews working on a liquid oxygen tank. This tank seems to have sustained minimal damage during the launch. For the others, as Elon Musk said, SpaceX may replace damaged tank farm tanks at the pad that were already set to be swapped out with vacuum jacketed versions. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks as opposed to the va vacuum jacketed giant hot dog tanks. So the, the, those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be, will be uh, removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. Next, while we think Starbase is a big mess that SpaceX teams will only focus on repairing and cleaning up, they're actually starting to build another production tent. The first section of the new High Bay 2 was assembled in late April. There are some who are calling it Super Bay. I don't know which name will prevail as the correct one, but we're hoping to get confirmation from SpaceX soon. The new Bay Foundation footprint looks smaller than the Mega Bay footprint, so it isn't actually another Mega Bay. The construction of new assembly areas is completely in line with the direction of SpaceX. SpaceX's Starship factory is aiming to build five Mega Rockets in 2023. Most recently, on Thursday, Ship 29 was heading towards High Bay for stacking. Indeed, the expansion of SpaceX is so rapid that no other private company can keep up. And and this is certainly thanks in part to their financial capital. SpaceX is one of the most valued private companies in the world, second probably only to ByteDance, TikTok's parent company. The Space Explorer and Rocket Launcher is a company many private investors would love to have a piece of. However, SpaceX hopes to no longer be looking to raise any funds in the future. It's safe to say that SpaceX's Falcon 9 program is profitable as the company has been successfully launching customer payloads for over two decades. The company has used that money to grow and become one of the most sought-after places of employment for college graduates. Its Falcon 9 rocket launches have become relatively common, and even the landing of its boosters is expected each time. In fact, SpaceX just launched its sixth Falcon Heavy mission, the first to launch nearly directly into geostationary orbit and expend all three boosters. It was a weird sight to see and something I bet costed Viasat, the owner of that mission's satellite, a pretty petty to do. 
SpaceX has also spent billions building its Starlink Worldwide Internet Constellation and Starship Fully Reusable Rocket. Neither of these have been cash flow positive, the latter still in development with lots of cash needed to succeed. According to Space Explored, SpaceX's success can be linked to three main reasons. First was its lower cost to orbit versus ULAs. That allowed SpaceX to win contracts with both NASA and the Department of Defense, which kick-started Falcon 9 and Dragon development that would have been impossible with private funds alone in the early 2000s. Second was Elon Musk's ability to drive up private equity to the company. As a result, billions of dollars have flown into SpaceX to continue its development of Starship and Starlink. Historically, space companies have been terrible investments, but now, you're missing out if you aren't investing in the final frontier. Thirdly, and finally, SpaceX has a clear mission. Get to Mars. Unlike many others in this industry, SpaceX's overall mission is straightforward and doesn't sound like it was workshopped by a bunch of communication majors. It's a goal investors and employees can latch onto and be prepared to sacrifice for, either with capital or along others at work. SpaceX is projected to bring in roughly $11.5 billion in revenue in 2023, more than the expected $2 billion that will be spent on Starship development this year. However, there are still unknown costs of running Starlink, an extremely talented workforce, and other operating expenses. This confidence in not needing outside funding is a good sign that SpaceX is operating well. Many other companies within the space sector are still relying on revenue from private funding rounds or the sale of its share publicly. SpaceX looks to be moving towards self-sustainability, depending only on its income, to fund its crazy programs. But regrettably, the remaining part of the space race did not progress as smoothly. The CEO of France-based launch company Ariane Space recently said that Europe will have to wait until 2030 for a reusable rocket of their own. Ariane Space is currently preparing its Ariane 6 rocket for a test flight following years of delays. Europe's workhorse Ariane 5, which has been operational for nearly 30 years, recently launched the JUICE Jupiter mission and now has only one flight remaining before retirement. Stefan Israel delivered the comments to a French radio station on April 8th, the European Spaceflight Newsletter reported. Ariane 6 will be expendable despite entering development nearly a decade ago when reusability was being developed and tested in the United States, most famously by SpaceX. When the decisions were made on Ariane 6, we did so with the technologies that were available to quickly introduce a new rocket, said Israel, according to European Spaceflight. The delays to Ariane 6, however, mean that Europe lacks its own options for access to space. This issue was highlighted in a recent report from an independent advisory group to the European Space Agency. Israel stated that, in his opinion, Ariane 6 would fly more than 10 years before Europe transitions to a reusable successor in the 2030s. But aside from Ariane Space, Europe is currently fostering a number of private rocket companies, including Rocket Factory Augsburg, ESAR Aerospace, PLD Space, and Skyrora, with some of these rockets to be reusable. However, the rockets in development are light lift, whereas Ariane 6 and its possible successor are much more capable medium to heavy lift rockets. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.